Well, hello and welcome to the Winning Women in Prayer conference on the Winning in Prayer page on WIP TV, on Roku, Facebook, wherever you can find Winning in Prayer, you will find the Winning Women's Prayer conference going on tonight and for the rest of the week. So join us tonight, Wednesday night, Thursday and Friday, where we'll have dynamic women, anointed women speaking about prayer is our wep weapon. On tonight, we have Prophet Shea Yvette. She is a classmate, a friend of mine for a long time. We've known each other for a very long time. We graduated from, we went to uh, middle school, high school, and graduated um, together from the same school. So I've known her for a while. She's known me for a while. And I am so glad that she is serving in the kingdom and she is doing God's will with her life and with her family. So she's going to come on tonight. We are going to bring her on after the uh, announcements. Um, she will be speaking. So I want everybody to get your device on tonight. Make sure you share the broadcast tonight. Share this stream tonight. The Winning Women Prayer Conference is on with Prophet Shay Yvette. She is from Fairborn, Ohio. And I believe she's a mother of five boys. She may correct me on that. Four or five boys but she's got a team um at her uh in her family she's got boys in her family and they were athletic and they're musicians and she's a singer her brother is a singer um her mother was a singer her father so she comes from a family of bible teaching singing folks and we are so glad to be affiliated with her and know her i know her brothers um her brother was a year behind us then she had another brother that was younger so they all are working in the kingdom and i'm so glad to know them so make sure that you are on your device saying that prophet shay is on so join us the rest of the week wednesday thursday and friday we got some more to go we got some more anointing for you to hear this week share it then september 3rd will be our 12 speakers for 12 hours of prayer make sure that you go to the events on the winning in prayer winning in prayer tv wherever you can find us and find that flyer save that date september 3rd saturday september 3rd it will be from 11 a.m to 5 p.m we'll We'll take an hour break and come back between 6 p.m. and 12 a.m. to finish out the night. You don't want to miss that because the world, what the world re needs right now is love and prayer. But I put prayer before love. So come and join us then. So I am going to give it over. Oh, but first I do that. Before I do that, she has a cash app. I don't want her to leave tonight without having something, her cash app uh, going up and making that money sound, making it uh, the coin sound that it makes. Please make sure that you are giving at dollar sign, Shay YV3 TTE. That is her cash app. Be prepared to give at any time during the stream. Don't wait till she's done. You know how some people want to wait to hear somebody before they give. We don't want to do that tonight. We want to do it uh, before. We want to do it during. I um, mean, if you want to do it after, that's fine. But right now, you will be in the hands of Prophet Shay Yvette. Praise God. Praise God. It's so good. To, it's such an honor to be able to, to come on tonight. Um, just thank you, Pastor uh, Tammy. And she is, she was right. She is a very good friend and a longtime friend. And it's actually, it's such an honor to be able to uh, <coughs> join her tonight. And thank you, Apostle, also for having me on her husband as well. So we're gonna get started. One of the things, um, I do have four boys, just a little bit about myself. Yes, I do have four boys and they are musicians and they uh, they like to, to rap a little bit and I can't rap to save my life, but I am a singer and a worshiper. So tonight, I absolutely love the topic. I love the topic of prayer. Um, prayer is my life. Um, it's actually the, the very first um, thing I go to when, with whatever I do. <clears throat> so our topic is prayer is our weapon. <clears throat> prayer is our weapon. And we're going to go ahead and dive right in. But first, I want to go ahead and pray and open us up in prayer. Thank you for all that are, have joined. 
Father God, I thank you right now for um, just your presence, Father God. Um, I thank you, Father God, for what you are going to do this evening, what you're going to do in each and every one of us, Father. I pray right now that the words that are spoken, God, that it be all of you and none of me, Father God, that it may penetrate the hearts, Father God, that it may reach the designated target that it needs to reach, Father God. And I thank you, and we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer is like a power, a powerful weapon. It is a powerful weapon. And I believe that when we come into prayer, we, we need to come in boldly and we need to come in courageously and unrestrained, unashamed. And <clears throat> we need to come to him without any certain agenda, without any, um, we, we don't need to be confined when, um, to a certain area when we come to him in prayer. When we become consistent and persistent, it will be like we have launched a guided missile, kind of like a missile that we can launch from anywhere on the planet and it will reach its designated target and there will be no defense against it. In other words, we come to God with a persistence, with a purpose and with power. He is more than just the 911 God. <clears throat> I hear so many times where People are calling him when they're in accidents or when they're just in trouble, but he's so much more than a 911 God. And, and he's not just a God of um, that wants to play, let's make a deal. If you do this, if you do this for me, God, then I will do that for you. But he is so much more than that. He wants to be your source. He wants to be your everything. He wants to be everything in your life. And so we need to make sure that he's not just the God of convenience to us. But he's a God in the middle of the storm that when the disciples were afraid, they woke him up and he said, peace be still to that storm. He told the storm to be calm. And he got up and said that. He said, be quiet. And the disciples, they were so astonished and, and, and amazed. They asked, who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? Jesus was a model for the consistent prayer life. The Bible says in John 8, 28, that Jesus therefore said, when you lift up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak those things as the father has taught me. <clears throat> Jesus was both divine and he was human. Why did he have to consult the father? Thank you for asking. <laughs> we see in scriptures in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, that he made, he was made a little un lower than the angels, and he emptied himself. He set aside his royalty and was obligated to fulfill the law, to not do his will, but to do the Father's will. And we can find that in Luke 22, 42. Jesus was not just sent by his own initiative, but the initiative of the Father. It was not that Jesus didn't want to do his own, didn't, could not do his will or his desire to do things, but he had come to do the will of the Father. He came for a specific purpose and was completely subjective to the Father. Again, he did nothing on his own initiative. And I said, all that to say that if Jesus complete, if Jesus consulted God and modeled the consistent prayer life and a life consecrated to his father, how much more should we be consistent in running to the father? Let's look at Anna for a second. <coughs> Let's look at Anna for a second. Anna cultivated a relationship with God. Anna was anointed by the Holy Spirit with, and the spirit of grace and she had supplication and she birthed new things into the earth through long hours of prayer. We cannot pray on our own strength. The Holy Spirit is our empowering force and we make supplications before God. It says in the Bible that effective prayer is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, 
<clears throat> in fact, let's go to Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. It says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will be made level ground, and he will bring out the top stone amidst shouting of grace, grace to the stone. In Zechariah 4, 6 through 7, it shows us the benefit of that grace, and it empowers us to speak, to, it empowers you to be able to speak to the mountains through Jesus Christ, which represent your difficult places. How many of you are going through difficult places right now? Hard situations, circumstances, out of your control. Look at the world around you. Grace empowered prayers can cause mountains to crumble and fall. The spirit of grace will equip you with the spiritual stamina and longevity in the place of prayer. I believe in the, it was the spirit of grace that allowed Anna to spend 60 years in the temple. That's some longevity right there. 60 years in the temple. Prayer was definitely her weapon. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, you make supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving for everyone. The Greek word for prayer is the same word that's used for supplication. The spirit of supplication results in a steadfast, continuous, unceasing, relentless prayer, praying. And it's entreating God. That entreating is an effort to persuade and over or overcome resistance. The spirit of supplication involves tireless pursuit of God. It's the ability to implore God's aid to a particular matter. Anna was constantly pursuing God. It says, be anxious for nothing in Philippians 4 and 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with gratitude, make your request known to God. Make your request known to God. We use prayer as a weapon. We should be using it every single day, especially in today's times. You walk outside, you need prayer. Prayer for safety, prayer for your children consistent prayer. I want to go look at a couple of passages right now. <clears throat> and I want to start in Luke 18, 1 through 8. And I want to talk about the persistence of prayer and how we use prayer as a weapon when we are praying to receive justice. How many know that we need to receive justice? We need to receive justice, not man's justice, but God's justice. Amen. <clears throat> the parable of the persistent woman. I'm going to go ahead and read one through eight. Now he told them a parable <clears throat> on the need for them to pray always and not give up. There was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people. And a widow in the town kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. Apparently somebody did her wrong. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the Lord said, listen, what the unjust listen to what the unjust judge says will not god grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night will he delay helping them i tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice nevertheless when the son of man comes he will find faith on the earth he will find faith on the earth <clears throat> one second, get my stuff going. So Jesus uses this parable here 
to teach his disciples, first of all, never give up. Never give up. How many times do we pray and when stuff doesn't happen, we want to give up? We want to give up. We don't, we, we, we just, oh, God doesn't hear me or, or I did something wrong or, or, and, and we just, we just plain give up. Jesus is telling, is teaching us never to give up. He shows them the importance of persistence and resilience. And he knows that in life, when it involves disappointments, we have loss, we have injustice and persecution. All very good reasons to give up and lose hope. But life attuned to God's presence and justice and goodness is a life that can endure if we don't give up. See, back in those days, widows, women, period, weren't allowed to talk. They weren't seen. Well, they were seen, but they weren't supposed to talk. They were supposed to kind of like be in the background, not in the forefront. But this widow, <coughs> and usually the men would speak on this widow's behalf. But this widow was persistent. Apparently, something wasn't getting done, and she needed it to get done. And so she went to the judge herself. She went to him, and she kept going to him. And I can just imagine, um, can you imagine yourself going to the judge and saying, I need this to happen. I need it to happen now. And when it doesn't, you go right back. I need it to happen. I need it to happen now. And you continue. You continue. It's a relentless, a relentless pursuit to him. And you don't give up no matter what. She kept petitioning over and over and over and over again. And she was resilient and she was faithful in what she believed in. She was persistent in her pursuit of justice. The woman in this parable also represents what it means to be positive example of that persistence that is required of every believer in prayer. We should always be pursuing God. Resilience is a strength of character to keep going, even when we encounter challenges. It can be grown or developed like a muscle. It's almost like going to a gym and you start working out and <clears throat> you get sore and the next day it gets even harder. And the next day you can't even move and you can't walk and, and you continue. And it's, it's almost like a continual building of that muscle, a continual pursuit, continually going day in and day out. And that's kind of like how we build relationship with God. We keep going in. We don't stop when we don't hear from him. We don't stop when we think he's not answering our prayer. We don't stop. We just continue to go on and on and on. Resilience manifests itself individually and collectively. When we talk about being resilient and having the strength of character not to give up, being resilient can be done individually by encouraging yourself. <laughs> Everybody, somebody say, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Amen. You can find it within yourself to keep going, even when it seems that all odds are stacked against you. Jesus tells this story to show that we should pray. And I know I keep saying it, but until we get it, it, it has to be said. We can't give up. We can't give up. Prayer cultivates perseverance. And what is more within the spirit of God who intercedes on your behalf. Again, I say prayer cultivates perseverance prayer cultivate. And let me go. In fact, this wasn't even in. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience trial, various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. When you are going through a trial, when you are going through uh, going through a battle in your life, when you are going through any situation or circumstance in your life, sometimes it's not, everything is not always the devil. Sometimes it's God wanting to see 
how you're going to press into him. Are you going to press in and are you going to allow him to mature you? Are you going to allow him to cultivate that? You have to, so you have to push past, um, push past all the uncertainties, push past um, any barrier, push, push past everything that, that you thought was right and allow God to cultivate the perseverance in your life. Amen. The widow's persistent also our need to pray without ceasing. And we already covered that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Prayer changes us more than it changes the people around us. Amen. It deepens our faith. It, it helps our, it increases our trust in God and it empowers us to wait with hope for God to act. The widow had no advocate to speak on her behalf. There are a lot of times where we are not going to have anybody to speak on our behalf. There are many times where uh, I, I have people that they ask me, and I, I love to pray for people. I love it. That's one of my passions in life. I love it. But sometimes there are people that that they want you to pray for. They think that God won't hear them. And I've actually had people say, "Go ahead and, and you pray because you you have a you have more of a connection to God." Well, no. Are you a Christ follower? If you're not, let's get you there. Let's get you there. But you have as much of a line to God as I do. It's it's taking that time and developing that relationship and cultivating that relationship with God. And he will meet you right where you are. He will meet you right where you are. I want to leave you with a question before we move on. Can you pray continuously even when God's response is delayed? Can you pray continuously? Are you persistent in prayer? <laughs> Are you persistent in prayer? Let's go now to... Matthew. I want to go over to Matthew. Is this okay? Is this okay, everybody? Everybody, are you are you are you good? <laughs> Matthew 15, and we're gonna start at verse 21, and we're gonna talk about the Canaanite woman. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go ahead and start reading at verse 21. When Jesus left there, he drew to the area of Tyre and sit, sit on. Just then, a Canaanite woman from the region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by, demon, by a demon. Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples approached him and, and urged him, Send her away because she's crying out after us. He replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came, knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He answered, it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus replied to her, woman, your faith. Your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from the moment her daughter was healed. <clears throat> I want to talk to you for a moment about the Canaanite woman and the desperation and, and the hunger that she had for God. She also was persistent and resilient. She had asked Jesus for help. A cry of desperation. She was a she was a Gentile, and back in those days, they would call um, the Gentiles um, 
they would call those that were unclean, that that were um, dirty, that that nobody could touch. They called them dogs. In this passage, it's more like the 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 word is curion, which means a a small a pet, a small dog, a a small a pet. And she she had asked Jesus for help. So clearly she had been watching Jesus. She had been seeing what he was doing and the healings and, and the deliverances and all that he was doing. And I, and I can just imagine she thought, wow, he can help me too. He can help me too. How many people do you know that that may not be saved, but but the first time that something something happens, they they come to you and they say, I need Jesus. Can you, can you, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Can you help me? So she had asked Jesus for help and, and there was a cry of desperation in this woman. And, and sometimes we come to God and, and we ask for prayer. And when we get no answer, we think that it's, that he's not going to answer my prayer. So I might as well just give up. And here when God when she asked for help, he didn't say a word to her. Not a word. Now, I want you to think of something that, that's happened to you or a situation or a circumstance or, or, or maybe you, you, you've known a friend that has had the situation or circumstance where they prayed and it seems like they're hitting a brick wall. They're hitting a brick wall. And God's not answering. So she thought instead of instead of giving up, this woman was like, look, I seen God. I can just imagine this is this is Shea 101, the amplified version. But I, I can just imagine because I'm one of those ones that when I, I read a passage, I think, well, what was the woman saying? What was she thinking? And so I can just imagine she's like, look, I saw you heal. I saw you deliver demons. I saw all of this. So I know you can help my daughter. I know you can help me. Why is not this man answering me? So she did the next best thing. She went to the disciples. They hung out with Jesus. If Jesus could do it, I know maybe his disciples could do it. They were around long enough. And so she <clears throat> went to the disciples and she was, I need you to help me. My daughter, she's possessed. Help me. And then and the, the disciples begin to cry, cry out to Jesus, like, you need to come get her, please. Get her. Get her. How many people do you know? How many people do you know? I I can't do it. Like, this woman's crazy. But guess what? She didn't care. She stayed persistent. She stayed persistent. And Jesus looked at her and said, look, I'm here right now for the uh, my mission and my purpose is for the, 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 the children of Israel. He wasn't trying to be mean. His father had called him for a purpose. And that's what he was doing. <clears throat> he wasn't trying to be mean. He had come for the children of Israel. And the and the word, um, we already talked about the word dog that's used here in this passage of scripture is a curion. Um, for those of you that, that are like, love the Greek and the Hebrew, it's K-U-R-I-O-N. Curion, a small pet, a small dog. Oftentimes, Jesus tested people to prove their intentions. And he did this often through challenges, and he often did it through response questions. In testing her, Jesus declined her request. He declined it. And he even, he, it says right there, he, he replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but that's kind of, that could be kind of disheartening sometimes. It could kind of be disheartening. 
when you get no answer or you think that you know because i'm not an is because i'm not um doing uh, because i'm not going a member of this church or because i'm not doing this or because i'm not going here or whatever that he's not going to answer my prayers or he's not going to help me it can make you feel some kind of way but guess what she did she came and she knelt before him she oh she hold out a double shot she came and she knelt before him she worshiped at his feet she worshiped him help me help me he answered it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs And at that moment, he wasn't trying to offend her. He wasn't trying to offend her, but she she took that barrier. She took that obstacle. She took that wall that was standing, that was right in front of her, and she knocked it down. She pressed past it. She was persistent. God is looking for women he's looking for men he's looking for children's generation we have got to, to teach this generation first we have to learn it for ourselves because sometimes we don't get it but this generation is looking for something that's tangible looking for something that's real looking for something that is truth and we need to show them how to be persistent consistent and resilient in prayer yes lord she said i gotta read that again the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table the little dogs they even i'll take the crumbs god i'll take the leftovers i don't care just help me just give me something give me something god And so here she is worshiping God and waiting. And Jesus replied to her, woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. She pushed past and became resilient. She lived out what Jesus had taught. She lived out that principle that Jesus had taught in the, the last story that we talked about, the persistent widow. She didn't give up. She understood what Jesus was saying and yet had enough conviction to ask anyway. I understand what your purpose is. I understand what your mission is but I need help. And even if I have to take the crumbs, I need help. Jesus had priorities. He had been given and he was testing the faith of the woman. It says in the Bible, they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're gonna be filled. I don't wanna keep everybody long because I'm not a long preacher. I say what God wants me to say and I stop. <laughs> but I'm reminded of the hunger and the thirst. And when we do hunger and thirst, we're going to be what? We're going to be filled. Amen. I've never known God to let anybody go hungry. I think our prayer needs to be God, keep us hungry. Make me hungry for you. Make me thirsty for you. 
Help me to press through all the barriers and, and all the delays and all the denials, God. Help me to press past all of that. It also reminds me of the, the blind man who was sitting on the, the corner and Jesus was coming into town and he came and I'm sorry, I'm going, this was not in my notes. He just came out of, <clears throat> so if anybody knows that passage of scripture, if you want to post it, but the, the blind, the, the blind man that he was blind and he wanted to see and Jesus was coming into the town and he had heard that he was coming into town. And when he heard the crowd, when he heard the crowd yelling, probably yelling Jesus's name, he began to cry out, Jesus. <laughs> he began to cry out. And everybody was told to be, qu be quiet. He doesn't have time for you. Be quiet. Be quiet. There are a lot of people out there that think that God has not, does not have time for them because people, because religious, religiosity will say, religious people will say, no, be quiet. Shh. You're being undignified, indignified or undignified. Just wait. We'll pray for you after he leaves. He's too important to be bothered with you. But yet he 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 got even louder. How many know that prayer being your weapon? How many know that you got sometimes you gotta get loud? Sometimes you gotta get your point across. I'm not stopping. I don't care what you say. I need Jesus. I need a healing. My kids need saved. He, he, he continued to yell until Jesus stopped dead in his tracks. When God hears the desperation cry of his people, he has no choice but to respond. And he turned around. And he said, what do you want? <laughs> What do you want? He said, I want to see. I want to see. We have to get to that hungry place, you guys. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. If you're on tonight, write, somebody write in the comments, make me hungry for you, God. Make me hungry for you, God. Make me thirsty for you, God. Make me desperate for you, God. I can't remember who said this, but someone said, I don't want to be a professional. I want to be desperate for you, God. Amen. Amen. Hannah. Hannah was another one that was desperate. <laughs> she was desperate. She couldn't have children. She was desperate enough that she. How many people have had some something that they wanted, some a desire? a desire of their heart and someone comes to you and says he gave it to me but he didn't give it to you but because of her desperation because of hannah's uh persistence in god because she delighted in the father He gave her the desire of her heart and opened up her womb, but only because she pressed in. 
There are so many women in the Bible that pressed in. That pressed in. Amen. <clears throat> Let's see. I think that so many times we get to a place in our life where we just, we get tired. We get tired. How many get tired? And God is waiting, is waiting for us to move. And there's a, he is raising up an army of women in this hour. I believe it. To pave the way for this generation. To pave the way for this generation and to teach our children how to press through prayer. To teach um, our, our youth how to press through prayer. And I think that we have to get to that place. I believe that we are in a season right now where God is... Where God is... Um, He's purging us. He's taking us through a, a season where things are just not going right. But I don't think, of that, like I said, not everything is the enemy. I think that God is teaching us how to stand. God is teaching us how to, um, to war. He's teaching us how um, to move. And he's doing that because, and he's teaching us that prayer is our weapon. I, I couldn't have, this is one of the best uh, titles, <laughs> prayer being our weapon. And not only prayer being our weapon, but praise and worship in lieu with prayer, in lieu with fasting. All of that together is teaching us how to endure. It's teaching us how, um, and, and, and like I said in James, and when we allow him to make us mature and complete, we will be lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. We need to teach this generation that he is the source. He's not just the 911 God. He's not just the God of convenience. He's not just the God that when we get in trouble or when we get uh, sick or we ask him, oh, God, if you do this for me, I'll go to church. I'll go to church. I'll go to church. If you do this for me, I won't do this again. How many have done that before? And sometimes because of grace. Amen. He is not a 911 God at all, at all. But I hope you, I, I just want everybody to know that we have to be persistent. We have to be persistent like Anna. We have to be persistent like the Canaanite woman. We have to be persistent and resilient like the woman, the widow. And we can't give up. We cannot give up. We cannot give up. Prayer is our weapon. Amen. Tammy, I think I'm. We could do some praying. <laughs> Does anybody have any prayer requests? Anybody have any prayer requests? Amen. We thank you for the word, Prophet Shay. I did not see any uh, prayer requests in the comments, okay. but if you have while we're on, please leave it in the comments because we are going to pray. Prophet Shay is going to pray. I'm just in agreement with her. Um, oh, uh, we do have one. We have one for um, Sister Shondell. Um, pray for her for healing. That is from Elder Linda Coleman. She'll be joining. She's our last speaker for this week on Friday night. So Amen. she's asking for a uh, prayer for healing for Sister Shondell. So we'll pray for her um, if there's any more. But I want to bring up some points that Prophet Shea said on tonight. I appreciate the word. I appreciate 
teaching. I appreciate um, taking your time and walking us through the word. You didn't have to sound like anybody else. You don't have to do it like anybody else. You can be who God has called you to be. So I had to learn that a long time ago. And I'm sure you probably had to learn that too, because there's so many people that you could um you know, uh, assemble yourself with or resemble or things like that. But you have to be who God has called you to be. So we're asking for um, healing for um, Leela Porter for herself. Um, so we'll pray in just a minute. But Prophet Shea said prayer is a guided missile. I love that. And that God is our source. And prayer cultivates resilience. And are you hungry for God? How hungry are you? Are you um, hungry like Job said? I need you more than my necessary food. I need you more than my necessary drink. How hungry are you on tonight? We were talking on last night about prayer as a weapon, using it to defend and protect. Tonight, we're talking about the hunger, running, chasing, um, using it for your resilience, that your resilience will so you will sustain and endure in these times. And as she said, um, the devil is not always the devil. It's just life. Life comes and throws something at you and you need to be prepared in your prayer life to have the first response is to go to God and say, God, I don't know what's going on and I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe that you can do it. So we, uh, Pastor Sean is asking for direction. She's seeking for direction. So we got quite a few. So when you're ready to pray, I am. I want to say thank you to everyone that is on tonight. Thank you for being here and listening to Prophet Shay. She brought the word. Um, she brought it, walked it down, gave us scripture. Um, so you won't have to go away and say, I don't know what she said, because you should have had your paper and pen and your Bible, your resources, because she gave you scripture on tonight. So we thank God for the teaching, the wholeness of teaching, the holiness in teaching. So we'll pray, um, Prophet Shea, when you're ready, you can go ahead and pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for tonight. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you, Jesus, God, that you are you are sovereign. I thank you, Father God, that you are holy, that you are so good, God, and that you love us so much, Father God, that you love us so much, God, that you don't want to leave us the way that we are, God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, for every single person, Father God, tonight that is on this broadcast, Father. I pray, Father God, right now for healing, Father God, for Leela's for Linda's sister, Father God, Shondell. God, I thank you, Father God, that you are healing her right now, Father God, that you are meeting her right where she is, Father God. Allow her to feel your presence, Father God, in a way that she has never felt before. Father God, I thank you, Father God. You said that by your stripes we are healed, Father, and you also, Father God, are a God of healing, Father God. But I pray right now, Father God, that you make her whole, Father God. Not only not only healing, not partial healing, but wholeness of healing, Father God. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, Father God, you made her whole, complete and whole. So from the top of her head to the tip of her toes, Father God, I just pray healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for Leela, Father God, I pray for healing, Father God, in her body. I pray for healing in her mind, Father God. I pray for healing, Father God, from the top of her head to the tip of her toes, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you are Jehovah Rapha, that you are God, our healer, Father God. And we glorify you, Father God, today. Father God, I Thank you, Father God, for Sean, Father God. I thank you that that you are, Father God, you're doing some things, Father God, right now, Father God. And I just pray, Father God, that she is still and that she listens, Father God. That she listens for your direction, Father God. Father God, I just pray, Jesus, that I pray, Father, that you just begin to, as you begin to open up doors for her, Father God, that she doesn't move too quickly, Father God, but I pray that she stands, Father God, and waits for the go-ahead, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Linda, I hear the Holy Spirit saying that... Uh, not to be, Sean, I hear the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. Don't be so quick and moving, but be still. Be still and know that he is God. Thank you, Father. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, I pray, Father God, that you give us a desperation, Father God. God, I pray that that be our prayer. Give us a desperation cry for you, Father God. God, I pray, Jesus, that in this hour, Father God, that we become resilient in prayer, that we become persistent in prayer. God, I pray, Father God, that we begin to knock down barriers, that we begin to knock down obstacles, that we begin to knock down, that we begin to knock down just when we, if we speak, Father God, it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, God. Let that mountain be moved. Father God, I pray for our children tonight, Father God. I pray, Jesus, for this generation, Father God. And I come against the attack of the enemies, these kids, Father God, this youth, Father God. They're going through things that we have, we could not even imagine of going through when we were growing up, God. So, God, I pray, God, that you give us wisdom, that you give us strategy, God, to know what to say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say more prayer requests. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We glorify you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We will pray right now for Prophet Shea. God, we thank you for this woman of God. We thank you for a heart of wanting to give your word, wanting to stand in the gap for others, being an intercessor. We pray over her right now. Renew, refresh everything that she gave out, God. Bless her household, God. Let whatever she needs come before she even opens her mouth to ask the desires of her heart, what she needs to pay her bills, what she needs to put food in the refrigerator on her job, God. Increase her wages on her job, Father, so that she doesn't have to ask, doesn't have to look to the left, to the right. God, we ask God that you be with her as she is a soldier for you and she speaks when you speak that those words will go forth and people will grow. People will be saved. People will be delivered. People will be healed. We thank you, God, for her obedience. We thank you for her sacrifice. We thank you for who she is and what you're making her to be and thank she you. knowing her purpose. We love you and we thank you. Again, as I say always, while we were yet sinners, you died for all of us. You died for Prophet Shay, and we thank you for her life. We thank you for her work in the kingdom. Further it, God, let her name be known in places that she's never been. Let her walk in places she's never walked. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you everyone that has uh, liked and shared and comment. Um, we thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We ask that you continue to pray for Prophet Shea as she does the will of the Lord. And don't forget to drop a seed on her cash app. It's cash app. Um, you, oh, let me get it because I don't want to say it wrong. It's cash app uh, Shea YV3. E-T-T-E. -T -E. There it is up on the screen. Please uh, make sure that you're dropping something in her um, in her cash app. Let her hear those coins sound. So again, we are back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, right here on all of our um, all of our social media platforms, Winning in Prayer, Winning in Prayer TV on Roku. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on everything you can imagine. This week, um, you will see us at 7 p.m. for the Winning Women's Conference on tomorrow night. We have teacher Pamela Wright out of South Carolina. So be here so that you can hear the word of God. Again, Prophet Shea, we love you. We thank you so much. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for being you. We appreciate it. We will continue to pray for you, pray, pray for your ministry, and for everyone that's on. We love you and thank you. And until tomorrow night, keep winning in prayer.
Hello and welcome. I am Pastor Sean Claxton and welcome to Sean Claxton Ministries. This is the place where we change, we grow, and we transform. Our scripture this evening will be coming from Romans 12 and 2. And it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we begin to talk about not being conformed to the patterns of this world. We are talking about the behavior, the values, the systems that have been placed before us that we should follow in this secular society. We live in the world, but we are not of this world. We know that we have another home. And so while we are not making sure that we are not conformed, we have to make sure that we are aligning with the word of God and how he has laid it out for our lives. If we are going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, transformation involves change, changing in the way that we think, changing in the way that we act, changing in how we do our daily life living on this planet earth we have to make sure that our mindset is renewed and though we see what the world may lay out we have to align with what god places before us so our thoughts our patterns have to align with his ways and his teachings when we talk about renewing our minds we can't be conformed to these patterns so we have to gain spiritual discernment and how we align that's what this ministry page will be talking about how do we grow how do we transform and how do we ultimately bring glory to the father through our lives since we are his voice we are his footprint in the earth it is up to us to make sure that when they see us they see our father god so we want to take what is good and pleasing according to him and live our life according to those things our life should reflect the, our father's teachings, and we can't be swayed with secular influences. So every Monday, excuse me, every first Tuesday, we will be doing Bible study here. And then on the every third Thursday, we will be doing, whether it's Bible study, whether it's talking with people, whether it's reviewing books, we will be doing all things life, spiritual, natural, emotional, physical, why? So that we can be a better version of ourselves so we can bring glory to the kingdom of God. That is what Sean Claxton Ministries has been established for. So I invite you to come join us as we study the word of God, as we meet with people, as we share new ideas, as we change, as we grow, as we evolve to be the very, be very best version of what God is calling for us to be. Welcome to Sean Claxton Ministries. I look forward to seeing you online as we share the word of God and as we change, we grow and as we evolve together. Have a great evening and I look forward to seeing you soon.